After I speak about this, we should all be brothers and sisters against and for one particular cause because we cannot use, we cannot allow this to be used against us. It's what they're doing. We must not allow it. I title it America's Backslide into a Vile and Overt Bigotry. Donald Trump has a lot of company in the bigotry domain. Here it goes. I was not naive enough to believe that America had overcome its intrinsic bigotry. As we pass laws to codify equality in employment, equality in education, equality in buying a home, equality in living choices, and equality in most things that affect our external life, bigotry and prejudice should would subside. That's what we thought. Why? Because as people were integrated by opportunity and reality, the fallacies of most of the stereotypes about each other would become moot. Americans would see that basically we all want the same things, we all have the same abilities, and we all have the same faults. That is a very dangerous result for a plutocracy. If a vast majority of people learned the old divisions and delineations were but social constructs to control, then control by the few, control by the puppeteers, control by the plutocracy is lost. Anything you want to add to that, my dear friend, Dwayne? Hey, man, you did a great job of laying that out. Um, this country is, um, you know, one of the things when I do, because I do a lot of international travel. Right. And so when, whenever I travel international, it's always good to get an, an idea as to what people think of us. Right. They laugh at us. Yeah. They laugh at us because we are so uneducated as a society. And I'll never forget this quote when I first saw it. And it really makes a lot of sense. And it's, and it's a quote by Lyndon B. Johnson. And he says, if you can convince the lowest white man he's better than the best colored man, he won't notice you're picking his pocket. He'll give him someone to look down on and he'll empty his pockets for you. Prescient, prescient. Th that says it all. It's, that it, says that, it all. That because, says it all. Because when you look at what's going on, because right. because look at who's coming out and is joyful right now. Right. It is it is uneducated white males who and I heard this white woman who was at um, a Trump rally outside just just yesterday say he's one of us. Right. He is a billionaire. Right. He's not like you. Right. But one thing that is being exposed is being exposed as to what what nerve he's hitting on. Right. And there are several. White supremacists that are coming out now yes. and actively saying he is causing a major uptick in what's going on here in the United States. Yes. And I agree with you 100%. What you, what you laid out when it comes to pitting us against each other, it reminds me of a quote, and I'm going to let you get to the callers. It reminds me of a quote from Wayne Dyer years ago. He said that if you cut us all open and spread us all out, all our insides and spread us all out, our skin only composes 1% of us. Very small amount. 1% of us. Why is it that the, the people in charge, why is it the people that, that have the most to lose keep us constantly pit it against each other? It is just for that reason. And that's that's the whole purpose of the blog. Folks, Dwayne, you're absolutely... Brother Evans. Brother Evans. <laughs> Brother Evans, you're absolutely right. Now, um, I always say something else. When we can unite, and this is a stereotypical statement, but I think it gets the point across. When we can unite Appalachia, uh, the ghettos, and the barrios, we would have won. Absolutely. But they keep us pitted against and each other we as are, well. and, and programs like this, and hopefully your program and other programs, what we do is we are here to ensure that, folks, we are all in this together. and We must be together because it's not the fight between us. It's the fight between that select few who needs us to be separate from each other. So let's go to line number one.